thank you very much. First of all, I'm the organizer for having uh, organized this very interesting event and for having invited me to, uh, to present my uh, work. Uh, this is a joint work with Marta Pasqualini, Valeria Bordone, and Aida Soleuro. And it's about uh, the role of intergenerational relationship in buffering the mental health consequences of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. However, uh, before jumping to this, that is the main topic of my talk today, I will briefly discuss the role of interge intergenerational relationships in the spread of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, also, uh, from, the free, uh, from the previous presentation, uh, we know that uh, fiscal closeness is the main um, condition for the, uh, the transmission of the virus. And uh, for this reason, uh, governments have suggested people to, uh, to stay at home and to reduce uh, physical interactions. And intergenerational relationships have particularly been accused to be responsible for the transmission of the virus. And this is in part because contact frequencies between family members uh, of different generation uh, constitute a large part of the uh, individual overall uh, context, especially for older people and especially in some countries like uh, Southern European countries. At the beginning of the spread of the pandemic outside of Asia, uh, this has suggested a sort of intergenerational contact hypothesis assuming that in countries where intergenerational contacts are stronger, uh, so for example, face-to-face -face contact are more frequent or uh, intergenerational coherence between adult children and older parents is more prevalent, then also uh, COVID infection rates uh, were higher. And this was in part true at the beginning because Italy and Spain were among the first um, seriously hit countries outside of Asia and these countries are also known to be uh, kind of familistic uh, countries. However, uh, we used uh, data from 19 European countries uh, and analyzed this data both at the country level and at the subnational level, so comparing different regions of the same countries. And we did not find uh, evidence in support of the intergenerational contact hypothesis. Uh, these results have, have been just published today in uh, PANAS. And the basic point is that the association between different indicators of intergenerational relationships and uh, spread of COVID or um, the infection rates of COVID-19 are not consistent. For example, uh, they uh, vary um, depending on the indicator that we used, coincidence or, for example, grandparental childcare, and they also varied uh, with respect to the level of analysis. At the country level, we do in fact, um, as the intergenerational contact hypothesis will suggest, usually find uh, positive associations. But these associations were uh, mostly reversed at the uh, subnational level. For example, when we compared different, count, uh, different regions uh, of Italy. So from this analysis, we caution against over interpretations of uh, the available empirical evidence at the aggregate level. And we should wait uh, for better individual uh, level data in order to get robust evidence on the uh, riskness of intergenerational relationships as opposed to other types of contact with friends, for example, or uh, colleagues. Uh, but additionally, uh, the point that I want to stress in this presentation today is that inter the intergenerational contact hypothesis uh, focused mainly on the physical dimension of contacts, and in particular, contacts between family uh, members. And uh, much of the debate, of course, have been focused on this dimension because uh, government had to uh, contain the spread of the virus, but uh, we have overlooked uh, the, the role of intergenerational relationships and contact more uh, generally um, in their non-physical forms and uh, as source of uh, support for, uh, for others. Actually, uh, if we consider intergenerational relationships more broadly, uh, from a theoretical point of view, the association is with the spread of COVID and lethality of COVID is even less uh, clear cut. Um, we can refer to the general literature on the, the connection between family ties and health and well-being. 
uh, that largely documented positive uh, associations. Uh, the main theoretical uh, argument in social sciences is the social behavioral explanation uh, that justified the importance of family for health because, of, um, because family ties is a source of instrumental uh, and emotional support. And also uh, the, this importance is connected to the social control function of uh, relationships. So family member, first of all, complement the role of healthcare system by providing uh, support, material support, information, uh, motivation to seek uh, treatment. And so these may uh, favor um, health behaviors and physical and mental health and well-being. So if we apply this uh, theoretical argument to the uh, spread of COVID-19, we may hypothesize a negative effect of intergenerational relationship on the, uh, the number of cases, for example, of COVID-19. For example, within the social control perspective, we can argue that children may positively influence their or their parents in complying with the measure taken by the government uh, to contrast the spread of COVID-19. So they convince their older parent to, to stay at home and they may support the older parent in that by, for example, helping them uh, in uh, shopping. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, uh, the role of intergenerational relationship uh, is important because of a possible um, buffer, as I was saying before, of the stress caused by uh, COVID-19 pandemic directly and also indirectly, for example, through uh, the lockdown uh, restrictions. Here we can uh, refer to the stress process model uh, that um, help us explaining why uh, family support may be important for mental health. Family members can uh, avoid crisis from happening by, again, providing uh, support. And these may prevent uh, normal stress to accumulate and transform in uh, depressive symptoms. But this uh, help by, provided by family uh, members is particularly important in uh, stressful uh, situations, in negative, negative situations. Uh, the literature has, uh, on older people has focused, for example, on the transition to widowhood. So during this, uh, this uh, period of uh, transition, which is particularly stressful for, uh, for older people, uh, the, the role of intergenerational relationships and contact with the other is particularly important in order to prevent um, depression. So applying this argument to the COVID-19 pandemic, we can also think that the COVID-19 pandemic is, a, uh, is an extraordinary generator of uh, stress directly because of, for example, infections or deaths of uh, relatives and uh, friends but also indirectly because of the isolation uh, due to lockdown measures. And so in this context, the role of intergenerational relationships may be very uh, important and very relevant, especially for older people. Um, so this is the main uh, topic of our, um, our study. And um, the, the point is that we know that because of uh, the lockdown measure, physical contact have been uh, reduced. Um, so non-physical contact may have increased to compensate for the reduction in physical contacts. And this non-physical interaction may have been particularly important uh, for older people uh, and to maintain a good mental health during the uh, lockdown. So this was the main motivation for us to implement an online panel survey in three countries that uh, were the first uh, hit by the pandemic in Europe. Uh, and they were also among the first to implement a national uh, lockdown. So these are uh, Italy, Spain, and France. And the focus of this online survey was on uh, intergenerational relationships. So changes in uh, physical and non-physical intergenerational relationships, and also uh, the means of communication, what kind of uh, tools older people were using during the pandemic to stay in touch with children and grandchildren, for example, and uh, mental health. Uh, if you are interested and you want uh, more information, here you have the website of the, um, of the survey, 
and also a link to a recent working paper where we uh, describe the main uh, result that we found from the, uh, from the survey. So the main research question that I will address today is whether uh, mental health actually worsened during the pandemic, uh, whether intergenerational non-physical contact increased, and what is the association between changes in intergenerational physical, but especially non-physical contacts and mental health. And the focus here will be on intergenerational relationships among um, people aged 50 plus. So um, as I said, uh, we implemented an online panel. Uh, this was uh, based on a thing. Um, so we generated a, a representative sample uh, in terms of uh, age, uh, gender, education, and uh, region of residence. Um, in these three countries and during the lockdown period. So um, between April 14 and April 24th. So about one month uh, after the implementation of the national, the first uh, national uh, lockdown measures. So the total sample was about 3000 individuals per country uh, and we target the all population aged uh, 18 plus. But as I said already here, I focus on uh, individuals aged 50 plus. So the total sample is about uh, 4,000 individuals. Uh, as I said, we collected data on intergenerational um, uh, relationships, uh, frequency of contact and changes during the pandemic uh, as compared to before. Uh, also living arrangement, because of course, this is also important whether older people uh, were living uh, alone or with a partner or with other people mental health and in particular uh, depression and uh, loneliness and then other uh, variables that uh, you can uh, see described in the working paper that I mentioned before uh, uh, such as consequences of the COVID pandemic like uh, income loss or partnership uh, relationships. Um, in the following, I will present some descriptives and then um, some um, results based on a uh, multivariate logistic regression, where the outcome variable is uh, whether um, mental health worsened during the, uh, the, the lockdown as compared to an unchanged uh, mental health situation. Um, we observed very few individuals that improved their mental health uh, condition, for example, a reduction, they reported a reduction in depression. So given that this is a very small subsample, in the main analysis, we dropped them, but the results are consistent uh, also if we keep them in the, uh, in the analysis. Uh, here I focus on depression. So basically the outcome is whether uh, individuals felt more sad and or depressed during the lockdown as compared to uh, usual. Um, we also applied uh, post stratification weights in order to uh, to make sure that the uh, that some important uh, characteristics in our um, in our sample, like uh, those mentioned before, age, gender, but also um, education, uh, matched the population uh, statistics, the official uh, statistics. And we also explore heterogeneity by age, gender, uh, and country. So some descriptives first. So as expected, um, mental, uh, mental health is, is, a, is an issue uh, during, the, uh, during the lockdown. Here uh, I present the percentages of individuals that felt sad or depressed more often than usual uh, by gender uh, and country. You can see that uh, for both gender, the percentages are very high. Uh, for men are about 40% and for women are even much higher, about 60% uh, of 55%. And the, the percentages are similar across countries. So many older people um, felt more sad or depressed during the uh, lockdown. And this is the, a description about the changes in intergenerational physical contacts. So uh, given that these countries have implemented uh, lockdown restrictions, 
we expected a reduction in fiscal contacts, and this is actually uh, the case. You can see that the uh, blue bar is very small, so this is uh, increased uh, fiscal contacts, of course, uh, is very uh, small in all countries and uh, for all genders. Um, and these people are probably individuals that um, were in need of uh, fiscal support, so where they were uh, especially um, in need of uh, receiving help, and so they even increase physical contacts. Uh, but you can see that the largest um, majority of uh, the population um, decreased physical contact, the, uh, the, um, the orange bars, or uh, maintained physical contact uh, more or less unchanged. But overall, uh, let's say about 50% of individuals declare a reduction in uh, fiscal contacts. And here is the same description, but for non-fiscal contacts. And uh, this is kind of specular uh, as compared to the previous graph. Uh, you can see that the blue bar, the increase is much uh, higher and is similar to the uh, previous bar for the decree, uh, reduction in fiscal contacts. So about 40%, uh, between 40 and 50% uh, of older individuals increase uh, non-physical contacts. And, um, uh, and um, uh, another uh, large part of individuals maintained uh, non-physical contacts unchanged. So now the uh, logistic regression result that I present uh, graphically. These are the main results where uh, in the first uh, uh, in the first panel on the left, you can see um, the uh, predicted probability of having felt more sad or depressed during the uh, lockdown, um, depending on whether uh, intergenerational non-physical contacts have increased, decreased, of, or been unchanged. And you can see that the highest risk of uh, increased depression uh, is found for individuals for whom uh, also non-physical contacts have decreased during the uh, pandemic. And having maintained uh, unchanged or having increased non-physical contacts um, um, reduced the risk of, uh, of depression during the uh, lockdown. So the probability of uh, feeling more sad or depressed, you can see are lower for these two groups as compared, for, uh, as compared to individuals that decreased non-physical contacts. On the uh, panel B, you have the same, uh, but for non-intergenerational contacts. So these include all other types of uh, contacts. And you can see that the pattern is similar, but the differences are uh, smaller. And this is also evident in the uh, regression result. So basically the, uh, the positive benefit of increased or unchanged non-physical uh, contacts is, a is stronger for intergenerational contacts as opposed to other types of contacts, for example, with uh, friends. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we also explore the heterogeneity in this result um, by gender, for example, uh, but we did not find any significant uh, difference in the effect of changes in contacts uh, and men on mental health. But as uh, shown in the descriptives, we do find, we did find um, that women were more at risk of uh, increased depression during the uh, pandemic. Uh, we also explored heterogeneity uh, by age, and we find that um, the benefit of increased or unchanged non-physical contacts were particularly strong for older individuals, especially for, for individuals aged 70 uh, plus and particularly in Spain as compared to the other two countries. And this probably is due to the fact that in Spain, the lockdown was particularly uh, strict. So the measure implemented in, in Spain were particularly uh, restrictive. So uh, concluding, um, worsening mental health during the COVID pandemic is a serious issue. And we should, we are, we are talking uh, fortunately about this during this event, but we should talk more about uh, this issue. Um, we found that intergenerational non-physical contacts have increased and the reduction in physical and non-physical contacts is associated with worsening mental health. 
Um, among the three groups, so individuals that decreased, increased, or maintained unchanged intergenerational relationship, it seems that the last one, so individuals that maintain more or less the same level of contacts, are uh, those who have suffered less. And this may indicate that uh, individuals that increase their non-physical contacts may uh, have been those that suffered more the mental health consequences of the uh, pandemic, and thus, uh, because of that, they, uh, they search for more uh, contact on the phone or uh, via other uh, means. Um, well, by concluding, uh, as I said, I think that we should talk more about the mental health consequences, uh, not only in the short run, so during the lockdown and uh, the, uh, the so-called phase two, uh, the post-lockdown uh, phases, but also in the longer run, because many of these, these consequences of the uh, COVID pandemic may last uh, for long. Thank you very much. Here you have uh, my email uh, if you want to be uh, in touch and uh, my website. Thank you, Bruno, and congratulations on your uh, recent publication. Very interesting. Um, so if I like the take home message then is that although we might have reduced physical contact, and I guess that's because of us being afraid that we might uh, well contract the, the virus and pass it on to other family members and so on, it has made us better in communicating with those in the family even if we might not be in the same physical space, correct? Well, um, I, I don't have data directly on the quality of uh, contacts, but we do find, for example, that uh, the frequency of non-physical contact have increased. And also uh, we found other, um, other positive effects like uh, a higher um, probability of older people to use video calls, for example. Uh, so uh, this is a general effect, positive side effect of the pandemic that the digitalization may have increased and these may favor uh, even in the future older people that may have children living in another country. So yes, this may, may be a positive effect, uh, an indirect positive effect. But I would like to point that, that even if non-physical contact uh, helped uh, a lot, uh, you can see that the probability of having felt depressed is very high, even for those who increased non-physical contacts. So they, right. kind, they kind of compensated a bit the reduction of physical contact, but not uh, entirely. Correct. And do you have any uh, data or idea, or, or do you know of anything that has looked at the direction of this contact, whether it's coming from young ages, towards older ages in the family, or it's more pronounced the other way around? Uh, yeah, we do have this data, uh, but we still didn't have time to explore this data in detail. Uh, the only thing that um, we, we already know is that um, we found this very interesting that uh, adult children uh, reduce quite a lot their uh, physical contacts with their parents, especially if they had uh, small children. And this may be related to the initial idea that children were kind of super spreader of the virus uh, as for other kind of viruses. But then, of course, this was uh, not the case. Uh, and so the, the reduction in physical contact between grandparents and grandchildren is even larger than for the general population, but it would be interesting to explore what are the consequences of this, uh, this for mental health. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Now, uh, I, I asked that because you also mentioned it at the introduction of your talk um, uh, that, uh, well, children, maybe younger ages, are uh, might be more likely to adhere uh, to the measures and uh, teach parents or the, uh, grandparents and so on to also take uh, the new measurements into account. And on the other hand, you see in the news that young ages are now responsible for the new way uh, coming because they're sort of irresponsible, right? So <laughs> I was wondering how 
yeah, how you see this in, in the data you collect, if, if you can see that. Uh, no, yeah, we cannot see directly these um, in this data, but um, I know that there is a paper of a colleague of mine uh, that use kind of simulations um, to explain that uh, horizontal uh, intergeneration relationship are as important as vertical intergeneration relationship between uh, members of the same family. So, for example, what you were saying that uh, young people go around and uh, increase the probability of spread the, vir the virus, these may be even more important than the family intergenerational relationship. Right. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us for the interesting talk. Congratulations again on your publication.